There are a lot of terms and definitions to know and understand when it comes to IPsec VPN, and I will try to explain the most common terms. First of all, when we talk about peers, we're talking about a firewall or security device that terminates a VPN tunnel. In the topology drawing I show you on the screen, there is a red line between two firewalls. That red line represents the VPN tunnel, and the VPN tunnel always terminates in two different VPN peers. So a peer is a device that terminates a VPN tunnel, and in order to build a VPN tunnel, we need two different peers. The peer IPs are the two IP addresses, one on each peer, that is being used to send and receive the encrypted traffic. Normally, the peer IP address is the outside IP address of the VPN tunnel, and in order for one peer to contact the other peer, the first peer needs to know the IP address of the second peer. So generally, the peer IPs need to be static. Peer A needs to know the peer IP of peer B and vice versa, and those IP addresses are being used to send and receive the encrypted traffic. The protected networks are the inside networks that are using the VPN tunnel. Traffic goes from one protected network to another protected network over the VPN tunnel. In an IPsec VPN, the traffic is routed in the firewalls so that the protected networks on each side are on different IP subnets. In order for the peers to route and encrypt the VPN traffic, they need to know which traffic to encrypt, and that is being done with a proxy ACL. The proxy ACL is an access list in each peer that contains the definition of which local protected networks and which remote protected networks that should be encrypted. So the proxy ACL is the actual definition of which traffic to send over the tunnel. When we build an IPsec tunnel, we configure something called a crypto map. The crypto map is the actual configuration of the tunnel and the crypto map is always applied to the outside IP address of the VPN tunnel. So if we look at the topology on the screen, each firewall has at least two interfaces where the inside interface is connected to our protected networks and the outside interface is connected to internet. And in this case, the crypto map is applied on the outside IP address. The crypto map is configured in each firewall and applied on the same IP address as the local peer IP. And the crypto map is actually a set of commands in the configuration that ties all settings together to build and define the VPN tunnel. And in the coming videos in this chapter, we will look at how to configure the crypto map. When the VPN tunnel is set up, it is being done in two different phases. First is phase one set up and after that phase two. And if phase one fails to be set up, there will be no set up of phase two. So they come after each other. Phase one is sometimes called ISACAMP or Ike. Ike is a protocol being used to set up the first phase, the initial phase of the VPN tunnel. And the Ike phase is sometimes also called the ISACAMP phase. That's the protocol being used. And ISACAMP and IKE is being used as different terms interchangeable of each other in this course because they are more or less the same thing. So when I talk about phase one, I'm talking about the IKE phase, the ISACAMP phase. After phase one is successfully set up, there is a phase two set up. Phase two is also called the IPsec phase. The IPsec phase is where we set up how to encrypt the actual traffic sent in the tunnel. So phase one comes first, and in phase one, there is an initial setup of encryption methods and protection methods being used to protect the phase two setup. And in phase two, there is a handshake and a negotiation to set up parameters to use to encrypt the actual tunnel. And I will soon show you how to configure phase one and phase two. The final term to know is SA. SA is an acronym that stands for Security Association. And in each firewall, when the tunnel is up and running, it is being shown with show commands as a security association. 
So a security association is a tunnel that is set up and we will see how it looks like later on in the course when we look at the show commands. SA is security association. So how will an IPsec tunnel be set up? First of all, there needs to be some kind of interesting traffic that hits the crypto map. That means that on our peer, if we see ourselves as an administrator of one of the peers in a VPN tunnel called the local peer, we have traffic coming from our inside networks that is defined in the list of interesting traffic, the proxy ACL. And that interesting traffic needs to be routed in the firewall so that it hits the outside interface where the crypto map is applied. When the crypto map is applied on an interface and there comes traffic that matches the definition of interesting traffic, the firewall tries to initiate the VPN tunnel. First thing that happens is that phase one is being set up, the ISACAMP phase. And the first thing that happens in the phase one setup is the negotiation of the ISACAMP policy. The ISACAMP policy contains a combination of different protocols and settings, and these policies need to be matched on both sides in both peers. And the first thing that happens is that the two peers try to negotiate the ISACAMP policy that should be used for phase one. If that is successful, next step is to change keys using a protocol called Diffie-Hellman. To protect the traffic in the tunnel, the peers need to have a encryption key that both parties know. And the Diffie-Hellman key exchange protocol is a method for two devices to negotiate on a common shared key without sending it in clear text over the line. And in this case, the Diffie-Hellman key exchange protocol is being used to negotiate on a encryption key that should be used for the tunnel. Last part of phase one is to verify the peer identity. When two firewalls connect to each other, they need to know that the other party is really who they say that they are. So we need to verify their identity, and that is being done normally with some kind of pre-shared key. There are other ways to do that, but the most common way of peer identification is to use a pre-shared key. That pre-shared key is not an encryption key, it's an identification key. And that is being used in the third part of phase one to verify that the two firewalls know that they talk to the correct other end. When phase one is up, there is an ISACAMP SA established and we can use show commands to see if phase one is up. And we do that by using the command show crypto ISACAMP SA. I will show you that later on. If and only if phase one is successfully being set up, the devices will continue with phase two. In phase two, there is a IPsec policy. It's a set of parameters that needs to be negotiated between the two firewalls. And if they can negotiate on an IPsec policy, the IPsec SA are established. And we can see the established IPsec SAs with show commands as well, which I will show you soon. After phase one is up and phase two is up, there will be traffic sent in the VPN tunnel. This is where our protected networks actually communicate with each other in a protected way. And when the tunnel has not been used for a certain amount of time, the tunnel will be torn down. So there is some kind of idle timeout configured for the VPN tunnel. And if there has been no traffic sent or received, within that idle timeout, the tunnel will be removed. That's the life of an IPsec tunnel. In the upcoming videos, I will configure a VPN tunnel between two firewalls. And I will show you the commands being used to configure the firewall VPN tunnel in both peers. And after that, we will try and verify the VPN tunnel and use show and debug commands to see how it looks like. So see you in the next video.